Without wasting any further time, let's go ahead and dive right into the numbers. Dive into the situation. Let me give you real numbers, real, real case study, real situation going on here. And we're going to evaluate different investment opportunities to measure against these numbers, whether that investment makes sense or not. So we're going to be focusing more on the cost of the investment and how that impacts borrowing costs in the line of credit, how that impacts our cash flow on a month to month. And let me look at a couple more comments here. We got Think in the house, Lewis, how you doing? Lady from Washington, purpose plans and profits. I'd like to become a coach. I think you have a YouTube channel. Do you not? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I, I think I saw you recently. Hello, Alan, Alice, Orlando's in the house. Cool, cool, Cecilia, Scott, Philadelphia. Awesome, awesome. Let's start with the four major numbers. We have client on the board here generating 12,148 a month, self-employed. They have a career generating 12,148 a month net. Total cost of living, debts, giving, saving, living costs, everything. 6,309.50, total debt, 300 grand. They had more debt before, so they've been doing Velocity Banking for a while. They acquired their debt tool, which is an all-in-one loan. So they're at a point now where all of the previous debt has been removed except for the debt that's inside of the all-in-one loan, which is our debt tool. So 300000 is what remains in debt. Current cash flow, 5838 So we have a all-in-one loan, which they got through CMG Financial. I have a link in the description below. You'll get connected with a gentleman named Harrison and he can help you with that process. You can also evaluate whether or not the tool makes sense. And hopefully this example here will help you determine, okay, maybe I shouldn't go for that tool in my velocity banking strategy. Maybe I need something smaller, right? So they got 525,000 as the credit limit all in one loan. 7.63% fixed is the interest rate. 7.63%. It's a fixed, it's a variable rate because of the uh, tool itself and what they chose. They chose to go with a fixed rate temporarily, right? And I think it's for three years. So 7.63% is the rate. We have a credit card with a $30,000 credit limit, 1.5% cash back rewards. So we have two tools, the all-in-one loan. It's our first lien HELOC. That's our main velocity banking tool where we're dumping all income in, taking expenses out. We have a credit card, second, do, second debt tool to use for cashback rewards on bills from here that can be paid with a credit card. So we've evaluated that from the 6309.50, we got $2,000 of bills that we can run through the credit card, get 1.5% cash back, $30 a month on average in cashback rewards. So strategy one, Velocity Banking with their main debt tool, right? So if you're taking notes, I'm going to list out all of the strategies coming together. So we got all in one main debt tool, Velocity Banking, Velocity Banking with a credit card in addition to the main debt tool. We are not running all of our bills through the credit card because, or if you do run all your bills through credit card, you are paying unnecessary fees that you don't have to. So to avoid that, you run it through the all-in-one loan. This credit card simply helps reduce the cost of borrowing on our 7.63% simple interest rate. In addition to their four major numbers, their debt tools, we've got a 401k that they're no longer funding. We have stocks. I think they are funding that implemented in the expense number. So we got the 401k, 150k, we got the stocks, about 100k in there. They've come to the conclusion that they're going to start liquidating stocks and eventually liquidate the 401k because they want to be more in control of their money, right? So they, after researching, right, watching a lot of different videos, you may or may not come to this conclusion. This is all about your what? Personal finances. So the more you get in tune, your call it your investor DNA, right? I got that from Garrett Gunderson. So shout out to him. So your investor DNA, you as an individual, we need to define financial freedom. We need to define the lifestyle we want to live. Once we've defined those things, we need to evaluate what does it cost to live that lifestyle? What are some tools that can help me get there? Not every tool is going to be beneficial for every single person. It's not cookie cutter. So in this case, 
they've been going through a process of transformation. You know, prior to meeting me, it was just Dave Ramsey, seven baby steps. You know, don't use debt, avoid debt. Graduated from that. They successfully implemented good habits, good discipline, spend less money than they make, okay? That's established. Their foundation's established. They now graduated, right? I get a lot of people in the comments sometimes that argue, oh, you know, velocity banking, uh, it looks difficult, looks too hard. You know, most people, right? I love when they say that, most people, uh, da, 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 don't know how to manage their finances. Hey, you're absolutely correct. But in this community on this channel, the client that I'm working with on this whiteboard, this isn't some stranger that I'm working with. This is someone that I'm building a genuine relationship, a long-term relationship. I'm getting data from the client. So this isn't just a random bunch of numbers just thrown together. This is real stuff. So when people come to me, usually they have their foundation somewhat already built to prepare themselves for the next level, which would be velocity banking. So that's what's happening here. They've built themselves up. They've done the pregame work. They have their debt tool. They've done the steps. They've watched my videos, right? This qualifies them in a higher authority, expectation and position for them to successfully implement what most would see as complicated for them. It's just another walk in the park, nothing crazy. So I wanna give you that context. Person is set. This isn't their first time doing Velocity Banking. This is in their first month doing it well in that process they're like hey i've got this money here i don't know how it's being investment i don't have control as much control as i like over the money i don't know what my fees and costs are right all these different things there's a lot of don't knows in their process of doing velocity banking they also came across whole life insurance high cash value life insurance becoming their own bank implementing that strategy so that's strategy number two we got velocity banking with two debt tools, we got foundation, Dave Ramsey, seven baby steps. They've graduated from that, so that's two strategies. We're running bills through a credit card. It's another strategy. We got whole life insurance that they implemented, that they're funding. That's becoming your own background. That's a whole nother strategy. So WLI stands for whole life insurance. They're funding $30,000 a year. They're in their first year. The 30K is actually not coming from their four major numbers, the 30K is coming from here. So they're liquidating stocks and they're pushing it over into a guaranteed location. That's what they want to do. I'm not saying you go and do it. I'm not talking to you, right? I'm talking with you. I'm talking, sharing what they've decided to do based on the research they put themselves through. If you then go and sell your stocks to start a whole life insurance policy and you have a unreasonable expectation that may lead to buyer's remorse. We don't want buyer's remorse, right? So if you're thinking, okay, I got my stocks over here and I'm making X percentage over here and I'm gonna throw it over here in this policy and I'm gonna borrow it out and I'm gonna do a million things and I'm gonna make all this money and create positive arbitrage, you don't run that proper math. You don't give yourself that time to learn. You may set unrealistic expectations. You might have some buyer's remorse. You might be unhappy. We don't want that. That's not the case here. They know what they're doing. They know the risk they're taking. They're actually reducing risk. They're just simply saying, hey, I don't care. I want this money here because I'm eventually gonna deploy it later in a purposeful place according to their investor DNA. Cool. So that gives us about three years of funding on the policy itself. So that won't be coming from their four major numbers. Just wanna make that clear. And we have our leveraging rules. Of the 525, you times that by 66%, you get 346,500. We currently owe 300,000 on the line. We are below over leveraged at 66%. We're below that. Their cash flow times 12, this number right here, is $70,062. So anywhere between 70,000 and 346 is our chunk. This doesn't mean they're gonna, as much as they possibly can. No, it doesn't make sense because they already owe on the debt tool. So that would not be wise they're not going to max out their line regardless of whatever sexy investment opportunity where they can make a ton of money comes their way we're going to run the numbers first then evaluate the opportunity one opportunity that they're looking at is starting a youtube channel becoming an influencer and providing products and services we'll go like this so the first opportunity youtube channel 
Now, to make it fun and interactive, they don't know what exactly they want to do yet. Let's make this interactive. For those of you that are watching, present, we got 33 people in the house right now. Those of you that are watching, you're present, you're here. If there's anyone in here that desires to maybe start a YouTube channel or is considering it, what would you like to talk about? What opportunity do you see? Go ahead and comment, and I'm going to pick what I think would be a little bit harder to do. Right, so you can use your imagination. Okay, start a YouTube channel talking about this and see how much money you can, we can potentially make. We'll do some market research. We'll look it up. Or if you have a legitimate business that you're building and you want to take it to social media to increase sales, increase revenue, right? Uh, build an audience in a community. Let me know what that is. I'm going to look in the comments. All right, I'm going to give you a couple minutes because I know there's a delay on my end. And let's see. Investments, that's where I left off. My HELOC interest rate is going through the roof. The bank said I can lock it in. Should I lock it in at the current weight or wait for it to drop? Or will it keep going up? Me personally, Wes, I would not personally lock in a rate in today's marketplace according to the current prime rate that I'm recording this, that we are recording this live. So when this video is out and about for two years, this may not apply what I'm saying. I think, right, well not think, the prime rate right now is 8.25% last time I checked. If your bank is offering to lock, say that rate in 8.25%, I would not do it. If we can lock in a rate that's maybe two points or three points below the current prime rate, if you're able to lock in a five, six, maybe seven percent like this case study right here, like they they did lock in a 7.63% for three years. What they, will, what they will probably experience is by year two or three, if interest rates do start to come down, by the time their rate expires, their rate might stay the same because interest rates would have came down or in their favor it might be less. But I don't think interest rates are going to keep going any higher than they already have been. So that's what I would personally do. I would not lock in my rate. I would do everything in my power to keep manipulating that high rate down. Hello, hello. We got London House. Been doing research on there. People in the U.S. are lucky to have tools for velocity banking in particular. I would love to find a life. In. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I don't know anybody in the U.K. that offers that particular product on the becoming your own banker side of things. Hello. My line of credit is now in repayment period. I cannot use it. We'll close. We have a lot of equity, uh, a good 350000 I'm thinking getting a new one and getting all-in-one loan for a new HELOC to pay off. Okay, think mirror. I would say this. This will apply to you. Right now, all-in-one loan interest rate is really pretty high. This client, they locked in a 7.63% interest rate. What I was going to get into was showing you the cost breakdown of that. So I'll say this to you think mirror right if you're not cash flowing near this number and bringing in at least double digits depending on how much debt you have so i'm gonna i'm gonna assume 350,000 is your debt and you're gonna you know say move everything in there right look at this case study and see how much damage we're able to do with with these numbers which are pretty healthy a majority of americans are not here a majority of you watching are not here so if you're thinking about getting an all-in-one loan, understand there are, there are closing costs. They're not cheap. The rate is high. On $300,000 owed at 7.63% in a year at interest-only payments, you'll pay $22,890. Divide that by 12, that's $1,907.50. With one month of Velocity Banking, using these numbers generating 12,000, cash flowing 58, nearly 6,000 bucks, they're gonna pay around this number in the first month, $1,843.72. So they went from 1907, right, which was that's the set cost, they were to reduce it by $63, right? This is underestimation, right? It could be, it, it will definitely be more, but not by much more. If you go an entire year, right, we can map that out, they're still paying a good amount of interest costs. To try to offset $22,000 is quite difficult, their current income and cash flow. And again, like I'm saying, majority of Americans are not even here. 
So if you put yourself in a position where you get a debt tool simply too big for you to handle, which I think is the case for a lot of people, you guys want to jump into the big sexy all-in-one loan product or first lien HELOC product with First Savings Bank. I totally get it, right? You're watching my interviews. Please pay attention to the case studies I'm running. The incomes are higher. The cash flows are higher usually most of the time, right? It's a lot of moving puzzles. If my HELOC went into the repayment period, I would rather, depending on where you're at, think more, it depends, but I'd rather just simply go and get maybe a second lien HELOC that doesn't cost me anything to re-access that equity and then transfer the old HELOC into the new HELOC. And now you can control lesser balance much easier than consolidating the HELOC and the mortgage. Maybe your mortgage is at two and a half percent. So there's a portion of your mortgage debt that's at two and a half percent. And now you got this HELOC that's maybe at seven, eight, nine percent in the repayment period. And maybe there's only 30, 50 K owed in there. It's much easier to control 30 to 50 K at say six, seven, eight, nine percent than it is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right. Like, like much harder to do. OK, so I just want to stress on that. I think that's extremely important. All right. Debt repay back or acquisition of investments. Uh, we've had conversations before, so I already know where you're at. Rochelle, health coaching. I would like to start a channel to preach about the benefits of velocity banking. Okay. Turo, rental cars, what to do with extra cash coming in, invest the rest. Uh, waiting for you to, uh, okay. I help people turn their household expenses into income. I want to teach them how to use that extra income to quickly get out of debt and start investing. Okay, cool. So we got a couple of finance people in the house that would like to start a YouTube channel around finance. And then we have one person on health coaching because you have a channel. So I'm going to use, okay, let me do, we got some more coming in. I would like to be a financial strategist like you for lower income women and children. I'll be getting in touch with you next month to seek guidance. You know, I'm, I'm fully on board with that. Definitely reach out. I'm excited for that. Wellness experiences through luxury travel opportunities. Booking a call for this upcoming week. Wondering what are the startup costs and needs for a YouTube channel? I have a family. I want to plan for them. And me as a consistent coach slash teacher. Wonderful. We're going to dive into this. You're going to find a ton of value in this. So purpose, plan, and profits. Uh, I pick you. You already have a YouTube channel. So you're going to help me on, on this. And we're going to give... Purpose, plans, and profits, a shout out. Let's do this. Let's go to my YouTube real quick. Let's see. Purpose, plans, and profits. 635 subscribers. 62 videos so far. All right. So... Let me share my screen so you guys can see what's going on. I am, so let's see what is she about, okay. Single mom of two, grown adult children, nurse over 25 years and a wellness coach uh, who's partnered with the online wellness store, okay. I fell in love with the budgeting community in 2021. Now I'm on a road to fire, okay. Financial independence, retire early. To live financially independent, retire comfortably, and earnestly build and leave a legacy for my family. Welcome to Purpose, Plans, and Profits. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to iron this out. Let's say we wanted to duplicate what she is doing with my case study. So let's say my client wants to do what Purpose, Plans, and Profits, Ms. Robin, right? She already has it going. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what she is doing already and we're going to guess. Right, this is what I do when I do my, 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 my uh, market research. I look at what other people are already doing so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel in that particular space. And then I'm going to find people that I want to model. Right. So I'm going to evaluate character, integrity, their, their systems and say, OK, cool. I want to follow this and I'm going to experiment on this, see it through. And based on whoever you're following, ideally, you want them to have some level of success already. So within this YouTube channel, there's a couple of streams that I see already. So we got wellness coach and Rochelle talked about health coaching. So the, the terms and stuff don't get too hooked up on the on the terms. It's just marketing. Right. So wellness coach that's in the health space. So that is going to be 
consulting fees, coaching programs, courses. Those are three things. So we got coaching fees, that's like hourly rate, programs like masterminds, courses like DIYs. Those are three revenue streams from that. Then she mentioned online wellness store. So those are physical products and services. That's what that sounds like. Online wellness store. So those are products that she probably does not have to package and do all herself, right? So there's automation and she is budgeting. So budgeting is a way of turning what? Expenses into income, or you could say expenses into cash flow because you're no longer what? Wasting money. So that's more cash flow that can be used to what? Put towards FIRE. So FIRE is a movement, stands for financial independence and retire early. So that is a version of investing. So maybe taking the free cash flow from budgeting and throwing it into a FIRE method of investing is also another stream, which doesn't actually require any clients. It's just based on her own work performance. So now, oh shoot, look at that. That free journey velocity banking, truth be told, I started watching it a little bit. So, so we're gonna go to the money making machine, which is called the descriptions, right? The YouTube descriptions. This is where the money is generated, right here. So let's see what income opportunities are currently being built. Wellness and plant-based living. Okay, we got jewelry. So because she's a content creator talking about topics that her audience cares about, depending on how she dresses for the YouTube video to show up to her audience, she might as well wear things that pay you money. Might as well. Doesn't cost you any more than what you already would have spent to put on clothes to get in front of the camera. So that's another stream of income, right? So we got clothing. We can put that under the category of just affiliate marketing. This is all affiliate marketing. All these links are more than likely affiliate marketing. Let's see. We got, so we got free stuff. That's to capture your email, right? The free stuff so that she can drip, nurture that email list. Let's go to jewelry real quick just to see. I want to get some pricing, see how many customers I need to sell and see what kind of revenue we could be making. This is her page. I'm just going to look for one product. Let's go jewelry. Can I click on this? Okay, it's loading. Either it's my internet or it might be the website. Let's see. We'll come back here as that's loading. We're going to look for another one. It doesn't look like she does coaching, right? According to these links. This looks like her main website. Let's look at that. Let's see what we got here. If you guys are enjoying this, comment. Let me know. Got 36 people in the house. So while this stuff is loading, let me come back to the screen. I don't know why it's taking a little while. Let's come back to the, to the whiteboard here. So here's what I wrote, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably got eight potential income streams, but we're talking about a main topic, right? Which is wellness coaching. And it's going to feed into the concept of getting on social media, starting a YouTube channel, becoming an influencer, that type of a thing. On top of that, there's the monetization from the videos itself. So that's another stream. This is the opportunity. Let's just say this client is looking at this kind of an opportunity, starting a YouTube channel. That's the opportunity. We just evaluated it. There's obviously more steps. I'm, I'm shortening this. You definitely want to go deeper and we will, All right? We're going to go deeper. Then we're going to look at cost of investing upfront cost and maybe we'll try to estimate like a monthly cost try to roughly estimate a monthly cost and now what i like to do is do it as 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 at a bare bones not trying to come out the gate spending all this money and then not be able to maintain the investment so this is a type of investment that is not a one-time investment or one lump sum per year this is something that has a, say, an upfront cost to a degree, and then there's a continued cost, and that cost doesn't go away. So this is the type of investment that will have an effect on the cash flow. We'll reduce our cash flow, which means we'll increase our borrowing costs. So we're going to evaluate that. In addition to this strategy that we've chosen to invest in, 
This client also watching my videos is going to implement 90, 90, 90 day rule to create content. So I have a playlist on my YouTube channel called how to create content goes over the 90, 90, 90 day rules, a nine month strategy to establish a successful YouTube channel that generates income that solves for a purpose that provides a great service to your audience. That is what we want to solve for. All right, very important. Okay, so I think I know what my reason was. I was on Safari, so I'm now trying her links on Google to see if that goes through. So bear with me on that, because I'm trying to get some pricing. Um, plus, Miss Robin, you're in the house, so if you um, if you are currently doing any coaching, Miss Robin, or any type of consultation fee. If you have courses, if you have anything, tell us what that is and what is the cost of it. If you don't have one and you're thinking about starting one, then uh, how much you would charge. So for whatever reason, Robin, your website is not working. Maybe the link is broken, potentially. I don't know. I tried Google and I tried Safari. I know it's not my internet because I have other windows open, other websites open, and they're, they're working fine. So I am going to say that for whatever reason, uh, that link to go to your website is not currently working. That's something you definitely want to evaluate. This happens all the time. It happens to me where we put links in the YouTube description. Sometimes when we copy paste, it doesn't translate. So you want to make sure that is in check. Okay. So we're going to come back to this. We're going to go over the numbers again. So currently coming back to the board, right? Four major numbers. We got our main debt tool all in one loan. Here's our total cost of leverage right now on 300 grand, 22,890. The goal is to reduce that. Now, simultaneously, while eliminating debt, while they're paying this $300,000 debt down, they also have a desire to invest. So now we're combining both. Velocity banking to pay down, velocity banking to invest. When I invest, my debt goes up, which means my cost goes up. But then because I'm doing velocity banking, it eventually come back down. So we're going to do, this is what I like to do. If we follow this plan right here, the 90, 90, 90 day rule to create content, the first 90 days is prep. In the first 90 days of doing velocity banking, we don't have to spend any money in prep mode for the most part, right? And when I say startup cost for YouTube channel is like close to nothing, Right, like I, I would say honestly, we can do it. Initial startup costs, like we can seriously do this with the stuff we already have. We don't have to get more stuff. So startup costs can be anywhere from zero to five hundred bucks. So in the first ninety days, I'm gonna overestimate and say a thousand dollar budget to grab a microphone some lighting we can use the sunlight when i first started i used i used sunlight when i first started i didn't have a microphone i used my phone i didn't have a camera i used my phone so those boom done light done i spent maybe 50 dollars or so on an on a on an easel you know the flip one no it wasn't a flip one it was the it was just like a, a small whiteboard that stood on three legs right that was it super super simple right did not cost a lot of money at all nothing crazy. So even with that, I'm going to say a thousand bucks. So within the first 90 days, let's say we spend a thousand bucks to start a YouTube channel. So that would mean that my expenses would go up to 7,309.50. So I just illustrated one month of doing velocity banking. Income goes in, expenses out at that number. You would end off around this number, 294, 161.50. You can verify the math. Overestimated on cost. And from 1907 to 1843 is a $63 change. Whenever that happens, the following month, you now have $63.78 more cents, right? More dollars going to principal paying it down, which is why I wrote expenses at $6,373.28, right? Actually, wait, did I do that wrong? That looks like I did that wrong. Yeah, because we have to minus that. Let me see, let me see, let me see. So we got... It looks like I did that wrong. 6309.50 was the original number. So 6309.50 minus 6378. That's what I did. 
because I'm minusing this because that became cash flow. That was originally interest because doing velocity banking becomes cash flow. And then that $30 also reduces your cost. So that is cash flow, but I'm not even going to include that. I'm just going to show this one. So we got 6,245.72. 294 plus interest, boom. 296.005.22. Minus income, 148. That's where the number goes down to, 283.57. Expenses, and let's just say we're gonna add that thousand bucks. Startup costs, start a YouTube channel. So plus 7,245.72. So what happened to our cash flow that month? It got reduced. So it'll have an effect, right? Because less money stayed in the HELOC. Not a crazy effect, it's a thousand bucks, right? Nothing crazy. We're just gonna run the math, say, okay, can I handle that? Right, that's pretty that's that's an easy one but then we start throwing in bigger types of investments because that's what we like to do as soon as we get a big old line of credit we want to use the whole damn thing and that goes back to our habits see this person being that they've been doing velocity banking for a while hopefully that that muscle has been built but i have personally seen situations where i'm working with clients and working with them for two three four years they get completely out of debt and then they go right back into debt and they just violate all the rules when it comes to investing. So I'm like, okay, I need to create content on velocity banking to invest. I need to create more content on that because they know how to pay down their debt. But they, for some whatever reason, it's like all logic went out the door when it came to investing. And they just borrowed and used their whole darn line of credit and just messed everything up. Not pretty. So we're at 291-102-94. So if you ran the interest costs on just those two numbers, right? You could do this one too to create an overestimation, but the reality is your balance will fluctuate between these two, right? Because it's being reduced by the amount of cash flow that's going in, right? So 291, 102, we times it by the interest rate. Let's see what we get. So that's $60 a day, All right? Sounds like a lot, right? $60 a day in interest. That's That can add up if we fool around, right? Can you imagine if they invested $25,000 to start a YouTube channel because they hire a video editor, a photographer, a graphics designer, a website, domain, da da da, ZRM, right? They, if they spend so much money, a fancy camera, fancy lighting, fancy microphone, fancy, 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 if they go fancy, could that have a much harder effect and and restriction on their cash flow for sure which is why looking at these different strategies looking at the opportunity itself how can i do that investment at a at a reasonable cost and instead of paying 25 grand up front or 20,000 up front hire a, a coach for 10,000 bucks instead of doing all that what if i spent 25 grand over the course of 2 years maybe spread it out right gives you time to have proof of concept right it's important <clears throat> so we got 60 dollars a day on this number 283 because we're evaluating our borrowing cost now times 7.63 percent by 365 that's 59 dollars a day and we might as well we can do that number two right the 296.005 times 7.63 so we got these are our average range of borrowing costs per day on this debt tool for however long I owe it. So to get the average, right? Add the three up, 61, 87, did I put 85? Plus 59, plus 60, 85, divide by three times 30 days, 1820. So would you say that if all I did in the first 90 days would put $1,000 into this investment YouTube channel, start it up to get it going, I'm still paying less interest than the previous month. I was at 1843.72, I'm at 1820 the following month. I would say that's good. Let's run it as if you wanted to be fancy and cute. Let's try to be fancy and cute. Now, I'm pretty sure you can agree with me. Let's say to start a YouTube channel, let's say we hired my boy Alex. His fee is 15 grand. He's going to help you with editing, title, thumbnail, all this, right? So, boom. Let's say that's his cost. And then He's not going to go and buy you the equipment to start your YouTube channel. So maybe you buy a DLSR, 
right? Is that what they call them? A, a Canon M50 that you don't know how the hell to use, and that's gonna cost you a band, right? One nice band, and then you buy a ridiculous lighting system like what I got. Um, I got this light bulb over here, which cost five hundred dollars. And I think these two lights over here was like maybe a hundred or so. And it makes me look good, you know. Got the lighting. Doesn't hit me, doesn't make me look too RNG. Keeps, you know, maintains my skin tone, right? Okay. Let's say we go sexy, right? So we got the lighting system, right? Say that's, uh, let's go with 650. And then let's say you buy a sexy mic. This one is not really a sexy mic but it works like a charm, in my opinion. It's a $100 mic, but let me get my other one right here real quick. So this would be like a sexy mic. This costs $500, Rode, podcaster, makes me sound like, like I got a nice deep voice, right? Works when it wants to though, that's the issue. Let's say you did that, right? Cause you wanna be sexy and fancy. Mic, Fihundo. Let's see, what else can we spend money on, right? We gotta get the CRM, website. Right, maybe Alex, you know Alex will help with that, but you still have to pay for the domain and and uh, the the hosting platform like a Squarespace, a Wix, or Kajabi or something like that. Let's uh, another seven hundred dollars, let's say, and then maybe you use ClickFunnels, maybe you use Constant Contact, ConvertKit, Zapier to you know you just start you know another band, right? Because you got it, you got it. 525k what what what's 20,000 bucks right okay let's see 15,000 plus the thousand plus the 650 because we want to be fancy and cute buy a hundo oh and you know what because you're starting a youtube channel you're gonna buy new clothes right because the freaking clothes in your closet they don't qualify because you got to be fancy and cute right so let's run that too clothes let's say that's another band especially for the women right uh oh shots fired Makeup, nails, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's even more, right? Let's throw another 500 in there, right? So where were we at? We got the 15,000, 650, 500, 16, 15, 500, plus 700, plus 1,000, plus 1,000, plus 500. So we went from humble, conservative, proof of concept, following strategies to, you know what, Denzel? I know what I'm doing. I got this. 20,000, 350. So now we're in the game for 20,350, right? We're in the game now. Are you with me so far? How are we doing? Just comment below, you're with me so far. We can either go low, low startup costs. It's a reality, you can absolutely do it and I can prove it to you. All you gotta do is go watch my oldest videos and you'll see, oh yeah, that was a under $500 budget. Two opportunities here, same investment. One costs zero to 500, and we overestimated it said 1,000. The other one costs 20,350. Now we're gonna see what effect that has on our cash flow, and we're going to see can we, how quickly can we recover those, those funds, right? How quickly can we do that? So check this out. Let's do, so we will erase this part. That was the 1,000. The borrowing cost was uh, 1820 after making that investment, right? That was the number and some cents. So I'll just put that, I'll leave that there. 6,245.72 is, we're gonna start from that point. We did one month of velocity banking. Now the second month within my first 90 days of prep mode, I spend $20,000. Maybe I do it over the course of those 90 days, but for this example, we're just gonna say, okay, we're just gonna drop 20,350 all at once, right? So we're starting here at 296, right? This is our balance. So we have to add the investment plus 296, 005, 22. We're at 316, 355, 22. And we're gonna minus income, 12,000, same number, 148. So 304, 207. Expenses are the same, 6,000, 245, 72 because I already, I already uh, threw that in there. So technically their expenses for that one month was what? 20,350 plus 6,245.72. So 26, almost 27,000 bucks, right? So I'm just gonna add that number plus this, 6245.72.
where does my balance end? 310, 452, 94. Are they still, are they over leveraged according to this rule, mm -hmm. right? So you haven't breached it. They're a bit of a ways out from 346, but look how much lower their cash flow is, 70,062 in a year. So again, it's gonna be difficult to maintain, reduce, offset 7.63%. Because I understand they made a 20,350 investment. They're, they're hoping to get a rate of return according to the business model that we start. I also have to factor in this cost, 7.63% to invest while simultaneously trying to pay down debt, right? So there has to be a balance. So I'm just trying to show you that that imbalance that you guys do and and don't think you're 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 not going to do this. I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to where they've done this. They did not run the math. And like, "Oh, well, you know, I can offset and blah blah blah." And it's like, "How? Like you're you're putting yourself in a in a really really tough position and will this opportunity do what it says it's going to do, right? Now the nice part about this opportunity with Miss Robin, right? Purpose plans and profit. She's investing in herself. So I've said on my channel before, I'm willing to double down on me any day of the week. But the moment you tell me I, I need to put 20,000 into some hope and prayer type of an opportunity or this thing or that thing that I don't know too well, that's where I get a little bit where my, my risk tolerance just goes way up. So the nice part about this is that in this example, this client would be investing in themselves, right? So even though these numbers may not look too hot in terms of what we end up paying in interest, they can, they can come to the conclusion and say, I'm okay with this, Denzel. I got this. I just want to get that confidence from you guys. That's what I want to get. I want to get that confidence. Denzel, I got this. I'm going to make it happen. Okay, great. I just wanted to show you the numbers. So 310452, right? Let's just times it real quick. Boom. So we're at 6489, 304, 207. Boom. 316, 3552. Boom. Great. So 6613 plus 6359 plus 64194. Five by three times 30 days. Look at my borrowing costs. It went up above where I originally started. Makes sense, right? 1,946.11 is my cost to invest. So in that month, I paid 1,946.11 affects the cash flow. So you could definitely, you could say that, okay, when I put 20,350, what I just did, 20,350 plus 1,946.11 divided by cash flow, 5,838.50, I just put four months of cash flow at risk, basically is what I just did, right? Four months of cash flow at risk. So we're, we're only giving ourselves four months to what? Grow this channel, make all this kind of money and re recover that 20,000. We gotta think a little bit more expansive, obviously. Now, that was just startup costs. Having a YouTube channel, there's going to be additional consistent, for example, using Miss Robin again, right? Look what she wrote. Yeah, she said, yes, because I, I keep my nails done for my channel, right? That is a cost. Let's say that prior to her starting a channel, she didn't do it every um, two weeks, every two, maybe she did it less, but now that she has a channel, she does it more. So you're gonna have to evaluate, okay, once I become a content creator, there's certain things you may do more often before you had a channel you weren't doing. So we wanna evaluate what that looks like so when you're running these numbers we just evaluate that okay we just put four months of cash flow at risk but also we can do an estimate and let's just say we're going to have an additional 500 to expenses let's just say that's the case which means my cash flow goes down by 500 dollars. so now i'm at 5,838.50 minus 500 so this is my new cash flow number, 5,338. So we are, we're accounting for the estimated monthly cost starting and running and operating a YouTube channel. Let's just say 500 bucks, that's our budget. And then with this 20,350 upfront cost, right? And let's just say that covers one year. There's gonna be things starting a YouTube channel. Like for example, you, you may not need to buy a camera again for another year, two years. 
your lighting will last you a while, your mic should last you a while, good amount of years. But things like ClickFunnels and websites and CRMs, these all have annual fees. So that is all contributing to that what? That monthly expense. So, so your cash flow went down. I'm being nice, right? This number should be higher if we went the sexy and fancy route, right? So that number will probably be higher, probably like a thousand bucks is what your cash flow gets reduced by. So anywhere between 53 and 48. So 48, 38. So now you only got 4,838.50 paying down your debt tool of that free cash flow because we have an additional thousand to five hundred dollars expense per month and we have four months of cash flow at risk in the beginning and now we just invested in the channel the only way i lose in this investment is if i quit or if i stop creating content or if i get too busy or if life hits me what if life hits me these are so there's these different things that we may not be accounting for hurt us was that good let me get some comments did you like that so far when when you're evaluating your velocity banking strategy and your investing strategy let's incorporate this guide right here how many months of cash flow am i putting at risk how much does my cash flow reduce based on this investment that i'm making that's two and then three what effect will it have on my cost of borrowing how much more does it go up by so when they made that twenty thousand three fifty investment we went from 1907 to paying 1946.11. So you have to add that plus that to get your total months of cash flow at risk. You divide that total number by your cash flow, right? And then you look at, okay, to maintain the investment, I have to keep feeding it. I gotta keep feeding this. We're looking at 500 bucks to 1,000 bucks a month. Now, the thing that many of us do is we look at what's the potential? How much can I make doing YouTube? So if we look at what Miss Robin is doing, all right? Okay, cool. This is good. I'm glad you're getting value from this. Look at this. Started my YouTube channel on my phone. Bought a phone stand. Amazon, thirty bucks. Yep. Yeah, I spent two hundred dollars to get my channel started. Nice, nice. I don't have any coaching service. I will start consulting depending on the service. One hour, one twenty-five a class. Uh, um, person would be two ninety-seven per person for three hours. 297 divided by three is 99 bucks. So in a class, all right, so those are two services, right? So we got, this is for the return, 297 for three hours. I'm assuming that's a class, or so maybe that's like a group thing. And then we're doing 125 for consulting hour. 125 divided by 60 minutes. We're charging $2.08 a minute. 297 divided by 180 minutes over here. She's charging $1.65 a minute. Let's assume, in this case, person works 40 hour weeks, so they have a full-time career, 40 hours. And let's say they have an extra 10 hours per week to put into the YouTube. So we got 10 hours per week, and let's say, so uh, yeah, so times, so we got 40 hours total per month on average, so 40 hours per month. Let's say they dedicate two hours per week, so eight hours per month to create content, which leaves us with eight hours per week, 32 hours per month for coaching and classes, 32 hours. And since we're charging anywhere from $1.65 a minute to 208 a minute, we could go like this and try to get an average. We say $1.65, $1.65, plus the 208 divided by times 60 times. So that's her potential. This is her average potential. My client here copies what Ms. Robin is doing based on her pricing and the industry, the, the space that she's gonna be educating on. Let's say we took two hours per week for content creation, that's creating, building that audience, attracting followers, and the majority of her time is spent on coaching. So if we're able to dedicate 32 hours per month, anywhere from $1.65 a minute to 208 a minute, because those are the pricing that she laid out, 297 to 125, her potential, her average potential in 32 hours a month is making 3580 So $3,580.80. Now the tricky part is figuring out how long will it take me to get there? 
How long will it take me to get to $3,580.80 per month on top of the $12,148 that this client is generating, right? Because then that would totally make up for the loss in cash flow of $500 to $1,000. We're recovering that through this additional stream that we've been able to generate. And that was just two services. Program, coaching fee. Program, $297, 125 If she launches a course, maybe she does a subscription model, right? Figures out a price there. Then the online store, wellness, all the jewelry that she wears. That, you know, adds to the equation. But if we're just looking at those two, say, main product offering, the thing that she'll push the most, let's just say, is, is, is coaching and, and classes on finances, which eventually will lead to other products and services that she can sell directly to that one client. We're looking at roughly 3,580.80 and how many clients is that in a month? So how many people do I have to serve to get to that number, right? Because I did, what is that? 3,580.80 divided by 32. So, oh yeah, so that would be either 32 clients. Yeah, that makes sense. 32 clients times that 111 number. Yeah, 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 okay. So I have to serve 32 clients per month on average to generate about this amount of money, right? Let's say I did all consultations. So 32 clients times 125 would be 4,000 bucks. That's a little bit higher than what I wrote. So 4,000 for 32 hours, that's 32 separate clients or 297, three hours, one client, I think you'll actually make less money here, I believe. So it's like 297. But if we have multiple people in a class, so let's say she runs one class per week, two hour classes. So two hour classes every week times four, eight hours. She's so got eight hours. Let me write that. So we got eight hours. You see how you just, you play with this? This is exactly what I want you to be doing in your own finances, in your own investment, is literally just play with this by yourself, right? Run these numbers. Run it with me here while you're running everything. You take your four major numbers and run the investment. If you're doing Velocity Banking, you're paying off debt, you're investing, you're doing all this stuff, let's run this together. This is the benefit of us doing real case studies like this so we can actually see it play out, what the potential is. So coming back, if she's doing three hours in a class. Oh yeah, so it would have to be three hours in a class, not two. That's why I was getting confused. So say each class is three hours long, I think. And maybe I'm maybe I'm misinterpreting what Miss Robin says here, but I, I could see doing three hour classes either split up into two hour sessions or one and a half hour sessions or just a full three hour mastermind. And three times four, twelve so say you did four classes in a month, and now it's just a matter of how many people can we get in a class. So let's say five people in a class times 297, 1485. And if you split the classes up, 1.5, 1.5, or one hour, one hour, one hour, then so on the low end, that's 1485. If we, because the, cause they're only going to pay that once, I'm assuming 297 for three hours. So they would have to either they pay that once or maybe that's a subscription miss robin pay that every month so we have to figure what figure out how we want to deliver that and how that breaks into our time because we're, we're we would definitely get paid less money here right right here you're playing a volume game so if you have 15 people in a class times 297 so it would take 4,000 divided by 297 so you would need 13 students or more in a class to make more than 4,000 serving, doing 32 calls. So this is actually, you know, say easier to manage and you're able to help more people. And then the one-to-one -one is one-to-one. -one. So there's, there's some good potential here. And then obviously as you progress, you're gonna wanna increase your pricing. As you get better, you deliver more value to people. You increase those pricing along the way. So this is pretty cool. So in my mind, I'm saying, all right, if I went sexy and fancy, there's a lot of risk. The potential is I could generate maybe between 3,500, maybe upwards of 4,500 a month. Now it's just a matter of getting 
to the amount of volume it's going to require. How many followers do I need? How many subscribers? How many views? What's my conversion? My sales skills, like that kind of thing. My conversion, you know, closing ratio, all of that. If you use the 90, 90, 90 day rule, we're projecting nine months to build a following. We don't know how big it can go. We want to build a following to then be able to convert to get this clients to generate the income that we want. And again, that was just looking at two streams. If she made a couple hundred dollars with the wellness store and a couple of hundred dollars with affiliate marketing, it just keeps kind of stacking on top of each other with the different links in the description below, creates a, a really, really nice benefit there.